Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development. This is week eight, lecture four, NPTEL course. In this week, we have been looking at land use land cover as a matrix for assessing and improving rural development. Uh, very focusedly, we have looked at how accessibility to land and water are very, very important criteria for rural development. On that note, it is imperative to have good data about land use land cover and how the conversion happens from one form to the other, which is now documented through the LULC change. Land use land cover is one phenomena and then accessing between two different time periods or multiple time periods gives you, you a land use land cover change. So in this lecture series, in the initial part, we looked at the land use land cover, the definitions, classifications, FAO notifications. Now we'll be looking into the data that is available freely in open source systems for assessing land use land cover change. Please note that you also had looked into Google Earth as a very important tool, open source tool for downloading some metrics about land use land cover change. In the last lecture, we had looked at the Wuvan's website and some data products. On the same note, we will continue the important tabs that are given in Wuvan's website. Even though there is limited data sets, both spatially and temporally, I am teaching Bhuvan in one way to promote these software and data because sooner or later, I foresee that this portal and ISRO's database will compete on international platforms. Remember the budget available for this resource is much, much less compared to NASA or ESA. And that is where there is a lag of data <coughs> and some delay in data processing. However, if you know how to do this through understanding the process and understanding the importance of the data, you would be able to do these maps by yourself. On that note, let us continue the discussion on using Bhuvan's open source system. In the next lecture, I will touch base on the NASA system. I still stick a lot of my exercises, my mapathons with NASA data less used and a lot of new data used from ISRO and Bhuvan because as an Indian, it is my duty to promote the Indian software and Indian space research data. How you can improve it is by contributing to these land use land cover changes through events like the Mapathon that is currently going on. Right now, we will come back to the exploration of this thematic service in Bhuvan. And as indicated, we will open the first tab, which we already looked at UP as the highest number of rural population and villages. And then we looked at statistics, Indian state analysis, we'll draw an area of interest. All these are the tabs. These are given in the tutorial, but it is not explained as a video tutorial, as an NPTEL lecture. So I am doing it as a lecture. Uh, and then we will touch base on the statistics, analysis, metadata. With WMS, as I said, I will not get into much. Uh, because that interfaces between the GIS software and the woman. Right now, we're just looking at the 
LULC data. And then we'll do some overlay boundaries and data, LULC opacity and degradation. So please allow me to share my web page. Okay, so this is where we stopped. Again, we can do a refresh to start from scratch. Uh, when you start, you will have this um, India boundary um, and across uh, India, even including Andaman and Nicobar Islands, you'll see highlighted in yellow, Lakshadweep Islands, etc. So now, as I said, we'll be doing the land use land cover, the, the latest version, let's say 2015, 2016. We will do UP because UP has the highest villages and uh, number of population, rural population, and we'll say view. So we stopped here where we analyzed the different data sets, um, different uh, LULC timeframes we had. We had different resolutions. One is to 50, one is to 250, and one is to 10. One is to 10,000 is uh, too uh, focused on the rural, um, urban periphery or mostly in the urban so we're not going to use it uh, we can quickly show how it is done say up not all states are there you could see and only some districts are there so these are the highest uh, urban districts and then we can just take this out for now we can say view and you can see how the lucknow uh, city district has uh, emerged uh, you can see the roads, the rails, drainage, um, some land use land cover, etc. So point of interest, I don't know, uh, maybe it comes up or not. It doesn't come up, so we can remove it. Uh, we can also say Tamil Nadu for Chennai, uh, if it hasn't. So there's no Tamil Nadu, uh, but there's Puducherry, and there's only Karekal. You can view it. Uh, and then you can see that this is uh, Puducherry and there's no point of interest. So point of interest is not coming up. So maybe they are working on it. So this is the 1 is to 10,000 K, uh, very, very higher resolution compared to uh, your um, other data that you have. I'm just seeing, so this Sri uh, Karikal Amayar Lake is a point of interest maybe, uh, but it doesn't show on the data set if you turn on and off. Yeah, there is some things which come. So for example, this one year river, uh, the bus stop uh, is a point of interest. So if you click it, uh, it goes up and down. So you can see that the river names, college, um, um, and then some uh, smaller locations uh, go up and down when we click. So this is important as a cartography image uh, or cadastral maps. It gives you the boundaries of the urban settlements. Um, uh, there's very less agriculture here, so you don't see much uh, stuff, but there is some plantation uh, happening on the boundaries, uh, some fallow land, mangroves, etc. So let's go back to our uh, initial discussion on um, UP, uh, where we will look into the um, 2015-2016 land use land cover. Depending on your computer speed and internet speed, it will take some time. So please give it some time. Um, and then you could see that uh, this image has been populated. Uh, it's a beautiful image of uh, the entire uh, land use land cover in uh, UP. Uh, with a lot of districts and, and uh, village boundaries. Uh, if you zoom in, you will see all these boundaries. Uh, the big NH uh, roads are also connected. So you can see that this there is a small uh, grayish line which gives you the different administrative boundaries. Uh, it could be uh, district, village, taluk boundary, et cetera, et cetera. So as I said, let's go to Bairali. We have this because I want to also see the Ganges plain, flood plain, and stuff. So you could see that there is a lot of rural settlements across Bairali, um, and you have this input tool already um, done. So what it says is you can also use this info tool. So this is really good to see uh, what is the uh, information on uh, each uh, parcel. For example, here uh, it says as LUSA description is. Uh, agriculture, cropland, and the acreage is this, to, to 20, uh, 2,155 hectares. 
uh, don't uh, pay attention to the number of decimals. It's too many decimals. Uh, it's done because the pixels calculate by itself uh, and uh, you have uh, different locations. Okay. So if you, for example, click on this one, uh, it should pick up as uh, a rural, uh, built up rural. And you can see it's a very, very, very small area. This is uh, how much uh, you can zoom in. Uh, you can zoom in as much as you can, uh, and then it doesn't zoom in, you see it will move out. Okay, so <laughs> this is a rural urban, I'm sorry, rural um, um, settlement housing. So you can see that it is built up rural. It's a very, very small hectare, uh, one hectare, approximately the land holding size of the farmers. So now you have Bay Daily again. Um, I'll take off the info letter. Uh, so you have all this done for Bayreli. The land use land cover is done. We are happy. Uh, now we will go to the different aspects that are given in the table. So let's do the statistics for this particular location. Okay, so district-wise for Bayreli. So you can see that LUOC information for 2015-16 for Bayreli. Of the total area, you could see that 83% is agriculture cropland. So all the statistics you don't have to do. So normally how, as I said, a, P, a master's student or a PhD student uh, doing the thesis would have to do all this by the by the GIS layers, download it, give it colors, and then extract the pixels uh, that are uh, agriculture and then put a total. <clears throat> so the master's thesis will take approximately one year working on this GIS layer. But now with a click of a button, you get all this data for 2015-2016. So a quick question can come as find the, um, uh, in, in UP, which is the uh, district uh, with uh, highest number of agricultural land. Uh, and you can Google it and find it, yes, but uh, let's do a quick Google and find uh, that. But before that, we can also see it from here. So for example, this is 83, 88%. Uh, but just looking at the different districts, you can see that other districts have very less, <coughs> uh, 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 urbanization compared to this uh, by really so by really uh, even though it's fully agricultural there's a little bit of the city as i said by really does take some part of urbanization so that is 4.61 percent uh, of rural area uh, has been uh, taken up 2.45 percent is your um, uh, uh, urbanization uh, urban part so if you look at it uh, what the statistics say is your built up urban is lesser than the built up rural. But in the image, you can see that red is big. So the idea here is, even though the red is big, the small, small uh, rural urban, which is maroon, okay? So the small, small rural built up uh, accumulates into a bigger area than the urban built up. So this is where it's very important to do a land use land cover assessment because uh, it gives you the accumulation of all these small parcels. All these small parcels is very, very difficult for the land surveyor to map, to calculate the area and bring it as a table. Whereas in, in GIS format, in a, using a remote sensing satellite data, the color can be extracted and the color can now be cumulative uh, added to get a net addition of total rural built up area and now you could see that that is 4.61 percent you could also see that the other uh, parts is very less 2.85 percent is the water and that is this the ganges um, uh, tributaries that flow through uh, by really or these uh, tributaries and the water bodies uh, but more importantly you have a better idea now of the statistical division of this area. You can also do a state-wise uh, location and here also you can uh, select different districts. As I said, this is 86.4% bug, uh, bug path, uh, but um, the image doesn't change, so don't worry about it. Uh, but quickly we can see Agra uh, has very less. It has more built, 74% of agriculture. Uh, you can have Aligar, 85%, uh, 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 Allahabad, 75%. Ambedkarnagar 80%, Aurelia 74%, this is certainly random, uh, Balampur 72%, Bijnor 78, 80%, uh, Chitrakot 53%, Lucknow should be much less, Muzaffar Nagar, oh, so Muzaffar Nagar has higher um, 
uh, agricultural area compared to Bairelli and uh, Varnasi would have more water resources uh, because that's where the Ganges flows. So you have 77% still uh, on the banks um, of the river, which is an agricultural land. Uh, we'll have Lucknow, Lucknow, okay, there we go. So Lucknow has only 56%, approximately 12.83% is urbanized, uh, which is very, very high uh, compared to the other regions. Uh, and then there's agriculture cropland um, and then fallow agriculture plantation. All these will combinedly be very less. So you could see here how uh, the land use land power has uh, changed. So this is higher. Uh, Sarajanpur has 87.3% and this around 88%. Uh, you have um, agricultural activities happening. Uh, so this is where uh, different, different uh, statistics can be plotted up quickly for 2005 to 2015-2016 uh, um, and it is a giving you a total area of the district and within the district how it is divided. So if you add all these areas it will come to 4500 uh, or 4575 square kilometers uh, if you add all the different land use land cover types that is given. If you do a statewide statistics you can do you can see that uh, as per the state wise 75 percent is agriculture uh, but charge on for is above the average right um it was 87 percent so let's double check yes 87 percent so 75 percent is the overall state average uh, and now you have two averages okay so basically you can do this state wise you can come down and then see uh, the different uh, land use land cover uh, you can see that 75% <coughs> is your um, um, agricultural or allied agricultural activities. You can print this as an image, save as an image, as a PDF, and you can use it in your reports. Don't forget to cite. Citation should be given to the data providers. So this is about the statistics. Let's do some analysis. Uh, okay, we're coming back to Bayreli. And as I said, I don't want the entire by really. Uh, maybe I want along the uh, river banks. So I'm going to say draw AOI. I'm just going to click. And then you're allowed to click points. I hope you can see that I'm going to click points. Uh, and then once you do this, it will go like a, a polygon. Uh, I'm just going to go up here and then down, down. When you're finishing, just say double click and it is done. So then you can click analyze. Let it analyze your area of interest. So this is what I drew. Uh, now it has come up. <laughs> and it will give you the statistics that you have selected 477 square kilometer. And in that um, cropland is the highest. You could see that very clearly cropland is the highest, um, uh, followed by your um, water bodies, which is 10 percent. Uh, Rivers and stream. River stream canal is uh, is fifty square kilometers. I purposely took the river canals because that is where the Ganges uh, tributaries and river is flowing. Uh, we could see where um, the agriculture happens. Agriculture normally happens uh, along the banks. So while I'm doing this, I also wanted to um, uh, open the Google Earth Pro. So let me uh, open the Google Earth Pro for you to analyze um, this this Bayreli region. We'll quickly see uh, along the region where <coughs> excuse me, uh, along the river where uh, the um, the Bairali, uh, is is having agriculture. So okay, the spelling was wrong, but now it just picks it up as uh, Google does always. So uh, you can see that Bailey is going to zoom in um, and the river channels are going to come up uh, as and when the uh, internet picks up speed. Uh, yes, you can see now. So these are the river channels. So now if you want to see back and forth, uh, what are these? So you could see that this is what was labeled as uh, wasteland, wetland uh, in the land use land cover in the data. You could see these lands are waste wetland uh, but as I said, this is more fertile land because water comes along with water. There is alluvial sediments. So these lands are very, very pricey uh, and have a lot of water for agriculture. And you can see a lot of agricultural activity happening. Uh, you can go back in time. 
for this area, always it's been agriculture. Okay, so maybe too much zooming cannot have help, but 2002 uh, should be good. Uh, at least one part of the image is good. Let me go to 2005. Yes. So here you could see that not much meandering has happened. So you can see people farming right on the banks. Okay. So they they start farming uh, along the banks of the river because it is very, very fertile. You can see here, these are crops, uh, rows. The rows are giving uh, the uh, particular maybe paddy was grown on this side. There's nothing grown. Okay, you can also see how the tractors um, have, have laid uh, the area, both the sides, there is good agricultural activity um, and uh, beautifully the image captures all these um, uh, aspects. Okay, yes. So now uh, I'm just going to go in a bit. We'll have better high resolution temporal and uh, spatial locations. You can see that this is being reflected uh, in your in your initial area. So these are the areas uh, where uh, the, 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 the pink color is being shown here as scrubland, galid, ravenous, so where the water is moving. These are mostly the land where uh, it's, it's kind of wasteland, not much activity can happen. But along the banks, you can see yellow color, which represents agricultural activity. So you can do a, a quick analysis uh, for an area of interest or for a district. A district is fine, but sometimes you want to do only for a particular area of interest. You can zoom in and do, uh, but make sure you understand the uh, resolution uh, limitations. Uh, colorings, please don't use these kind of colorings. Just take, if I were you, I'll take these in an Excel. Just type these values in a, in a table and then make your own um, uh, pie charts. Uh, black for agriculture doesn't look good. Uh, it should be green. Uh, so some coloring issues are there. But again, as I said, it is up to you. You are the user. You are going to present it to a, a, a committee. You are going to present it for research. So make it beautiful. Use an Excel sheet. Use a table sheet. Copy these values. Plot it in a software. There's a lot of open source softwares that can plot these graphs. Then we'll go to metadata. Again, what is metadata? Metadata is the data about the data. So you remember that we had gone into the uh, technical document and then we read about this uh, satellite, what was used, et cetera. So you can see that from this metadata also, uh, which is needed for using in your reports. Um, who has done it? It is the Hyderabad Remote Sensing Center, the phone numbers, who you can contact, uh, what type of data it is vector data. Uh, so there's polygons, not uh, rasters. So they've made polygons, maybe they have converted the raster into polygon, and the polygon has converted, uh, calculated the area, the resolutions uh, are, are given, uh, what geo spheroid and datum, which is the uh, uh, georeference coordinate system, uh, GCS we have used is uh, WGS 1984. This is the same that we have used in our own tutorials also. Uh, and then the upper left, uh, lower left, all these things. Uh, what data have they used? Original source is multi-temporal spectral data from uh, resource two, which is list three sensor. So list three sensor was used. Uh, some um, rectifications were done, which is cleaning up of the data. Most important, the source of the data also gives you the time they take, they take the data. So they took uh, Karif, uh, monsoon season, uh, August to October, post-monsoon W to December, March, pre-monsoon Zaid, uh, April to May. All these are given in the um, technical document also, but here you can quickly take it out. Okay, the metadata stamp is 5-3-2023. Uh, so where I did it, so today I'm doing it, which is 5-3-2023. So uh, it is putting the date. And then you have the land is land cover type. English is the language used. Data identification. Uh, overall accuracy is 79%. Uh, to 97% 90, like water bodies. So what they're trying to say is the accuracy is okay, 80%, which is still good to do some good uh, mappings um, and assessments. Uh, in agricultural areas, uh, water bodies is very, very accurate, they say. It's uh, around 97% accurate because um, our water bodies are easier to map, uh, whereas agriculture, as you saw in the Google Earth image, there should be cloud cover, there will be some resolution issues, all these have to be taken care of especially in the monsoon time when there is a lot of cloud cover. 
okay? because cloud cover will cover the agricultural crops. So you will not know what is under the cloud uh, unless and otherwise uh, you do a lot of survey, which is <coughs> expensive. So where they did it, uh, Meras, Ranchi, corporate name, Lucknow, and Birla Institute of Technology, BITS, uh, Remote Sensing Applications Center, Lucknow, for the UP state, um, um, and everything is there. So web services, as you see, uh, you have a link to the uh, WMS um, um, data. You can, for Q G QGIS, ArcGIS, and other users, you can use this as an URL. So basically, when you put this URL in QGIS, it will pull the data into it. Uh, we are going to use much, much higher resolution data. So that is why we are not going to go through the QGIS exercise for this. Uh, but there is important overlay. So let's go to the overlay. So for this particular region, there are multiple data sets that you can overlay. What do you mean by overlay is there is a data and you put a data on top of it. So you're overlaying a data. So let's say, for example, we didn't know what was the administrative layers. There's a lot of noise coming. So let's put a district boundary. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. Yes. So now you can see the district boundary coming up as red line. Uh, so Bairali has a district boundary. Okay, so none I can do. So all the red is gone. The state is already there, UP, so you, you don't have it. So talo. So within the district, there are multiple talos. So if you take this, uh, it, it goes between two taluks. Um, uh, so on one side, there is a taluk which uh, goes uh, to the um, uh, right side of the riverbank, and then the left side, there's another taluk. Okay, so this is the city by really. Uh, we'll keep it as the district. Uh, so the district boundary will catch by really where you are. Okay, so we can do uh, none for now. Uh, and then we can take out the administrative layer. So just click the plus mark, it will open uh, and then give you whatever uh, choices you have. You can put roads, uh, the national highways. So the national NH24 is coming, you can see, uh, which is really important because when you're doing these uh, rural connectivity maps, which is also needed for rural development, this is what you would need. You can remove the other layers that are creating noise, uh, but you can uh, create these um, national highway maps. Okay, so the GQ is more uh, smaller roads. Uh, let me see if these come out and go. It's not coming up. So only some data has been uploaded. Uh, and in the water bodies, you have reservoirs, rivers. So I'm just going to click on the river. Uh, the Ganges River should come up. Uh, so you can see the blue line just populating on top of it. So, so you see the light blue line, uh, that is the Ganges and the tributaries. Uh, as I said, Bairali has the tributary of the Ganges. Since it's a lower order stream, it's not populating up, uh, but we can remove it. So this light blue line will go if I remove it. Uh, and then there is reservoirs and uh, lakes. So these are basically the small dams uh, that are built across uh, a particular region. So you can map that also. Okay, so we can close this, close this. So these are the base layers, uh, we have seen it. Now, <clears throat> we have seen that there are thematic layers. Now we can see a change. So I'm just going to go to the AOI and then draw another AOI just for and then analyze. It will do uh, to clear it. And there is no way to clear it unless otherwise we do a. Um, yeah, let me do one thing. I'm just going to zoom out, uh, put an AOI here so that it picks it up and then analyze. Let it analyze. It won't analyze. Let me go to overlay. Uh, and then we go to by ready. Okay, so this is where we were initially. By really, we are here back again. Um, we can do that again. Move population view. We'll go back to by really second. It's easier to quickly do it by refreshing uh, as long as you know the steps. So as I said, by really, we go and then it is. Okay, so we're, we're back at by really, uh, and then we'll go to overlay. So now we've done the first base layers. We're going to the thematic layers. Uh, let's say 2005, 2006, how was it eroding? 
um, and we want to see UP. Just here, here you don't see the entire uh, district, but the entire state will come up. Uh, and you can see that there are there is some some erosion happening in the water body areas. Um, and then you can you can uh, how do you visualize it? Is you can see if I bring it down to zero, which is opacity. Um, uh, does it overpopulate on top of it, etc. Okay, so the max you can go is nine, and you don't see much uh, change happening. Maybe here there is some erosion happening, etc. So this is only going to give you a erosion uh, value uh, if you have uh, a land degradation happening. For example, let's go here. This is a, this is as much as I can go, and I am going to reduce it. So you, here you can see that. Let me bring my pointer. So here's there is some erosion happening, and the color is given in the metadata of the erosion data. So you have to go back to erosion data, look at what the color means, and then add it. So if you add increase the opacity, you can see that this is populating up. If I decrease it, it will go out. Same here. Along the water body, there is uh, land erosion, uh, and if you increase increase the uh, opacity, which means uh, it will be on top and it will block the bottom layer. Then you can see the maximum uh, overlay happening. Okay, so now we can go back and then see if we could uh, remove it. Yes, none. So we have seen the erosion. Now I'm going to show you the flood annual layers. There's only two, as I said. Not all layers are mapped, only two are mapped. So we'll close that. Then the flood hazard also, Assam is done. So let's close it. Uh, land degradation, uh, 2015. So this is important because this map is 2015. So let's do 2015 and then come back to UP. Okay. Okay, there it is. So you could see that these are the land degradation uh, parts. Uh, and let's see where is the landing. Let's say maybe it's saying the blue part is degrading land. Uh, let's bring down the opacity and see where it is. Now, beautifully, you can see there is a land use land cover on the bottom, and on the top, there is the uh, land degradation. Okay, so there is some kind of degradation happening, but you could clearly see that it is happening along the river channels. So, if the rivers are not maintained properly, then there is a lot of uh, erosion and degradation of land on both sides of the bank. So, you could see here on both sides of the bank of the river, there is degradation. These are the high productive agricultural lands. So uh, for agricultural development and rural uh, empowerment, these lands have to be protected. So the water resources have to be managed. Okay, so I'm going to close this as none. And then there is also land use land cover. So let's do a land use land cover 2005 and 2006. Uh, let's go to UP, and now you will be seeing a population of two data sets. Okay, so let's see if I slowly bring it down. You can see that this land was uh, um, uh, non uh, not in the uh, um, uh, agriculture. You can see that these are not agricultural, but they have been converted to agriculture in 2015-16. So if I reduce the opacity, the top layer, which is the 20 2011, sorry, 2005, 2006. So 10 years before, 10 years before the base map, you could see that there is less uh, agricultural land. Okay. So all these agricultural land have been wasteland, but because of science and technology, some interventions, all these have been converted to agricultural land. Where you see more change is the city itself. Let's go back and you can see that, oh, here, well, they just have an eye here you'll see that the city is growing because I'm putting a 2005 uh, 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 land on top, right? So all these were agricultural land, the yellow, 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 all these are agricultural land, rural land. But now if you uh, open up the 2015, 2016, you can see that it has been converted to the city, which is the uh, uh, by release city increase. Like this, you can keep on adding overlay different data. So there's land use land cover 12, uh, 2015, 16, which is already here. There is salt affected and water logging. There's not much uh, salt here. So you won't see that, but let's uh, add um, water logging. That is pretty dominant. You can see here, 
Okay, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity. So this is the river, and wherever the river floods, wherever the river expands, you will see water logging. So you now you can download this map. You can print this map uh, here. Don't just download it. Frame it. You will you will get it up. I'll put none. And then you have the wasteland, uh, 2008, 2009, let's do 2005, 15, 2016. Uh, it should normally overlap because we already have wasteland in this part. Uh, so you have this uh, high wasteland around this area. So now you see that wasteland is already a land use land cover in the 2015, 2016 data set, but it is not showing because it was not predominantly mapped in the 2015-16 data set. So this is it. Uh, these are mostly the overlay options. You have a spatial framework if you want. Um, uh, it's not much. Uh, it's just a gridding if you want. You can take it off. Uh, and then the Bowen data, if you don't want the Bowen data, you can take it out and then put uh, Rediff maps, which is the road maps, uh, which is giving a higher number of attributes. You can see multiple roads here compared to the Bowen map. Um, so you can use whichever data you would like to see. So it says ready for layer may not be available at some higher zoom levels. Uh, you can take it off and use it. So this is all about the ISRO LULC data set and how you can use it, play with it, and download the data. Uh, sometimes when you cannot download the data, you can always uh, georeference it, print it, and then georeference it, and then use it for your study area. With this, I will close here. Uh, in the next uh, lecture, we will uh, look into the NASA data set for uh, LULC and how they have done it differently, uh, which is also important to, sh to share and copy, right? We want to see how uh, different agencies are mapping so that we can have the best data available. So this, I stop here. Uh, I conclude today's lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.